Okay, welcome everybody to today's webinar, Intro to Windows 10 Computers. So my name is Rebecca Van Dusen and I am a library associate here at the Champaign Public Library. If you've attended any tech workshops, you've probably seen me helping with those um, with Susan and occasionally I will also teach a class. I usually teach the classes sort of based around eBooks and anything to do with Apple computers. I really like Apple stuff, so that's me. Um, and before I introduce our technology librarian, Susan Winkler, I would like to mention that there are some Zoom features available to you. If you hover your mouse near the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see some controls pop up. So starting at the bottom left, you can adjust your audio settings like your speaker or your microphone. And that will come in handy if you want to speak out loud. We have the raise hand button there. You'll see it looks like a hand. If you click on that, that will indicate to us that you wanted to ask a question using your microphone instead of using the chat. So you'll also see a chat button there. You can click on that as well and type in any chat question that you have to us during the webinar. So while Susan is um, going over her slides and doing demonstrations, uh, I will be in the background helping to answer questions. We also have Chris here. She is a practicum student with us for this semester. Um, she'll be in the background as well, helping, uh, helping us answer questions and just kind of observing because this is her chance to practice before she starts doing this kind of stuff. So um, let me just make sure I've got everything covered. You've probably noticed as well that we are in Zoom, of course. Um, we were going to be in person, but moving forward for the time being, we are going to be on Zoom. So if you see any class that you're wanting to sign up for, that will be a virtual program. Um, and then I will also put the handout in today's, uh, in the chat for today, so that when you click on that link, which I'll put in the chat, then it will allow you to access the uh, slides that Susan will cover for today. And also, um, we'll have that recording sent out in an email as well as those slides. So if you miss the slides for today, that's okay. They'll be in the email. And you can always reach out to us after the class as well. We'll put our emails in the chat. Um, otherwise, yeah, basically the main thing is just um, feel free to ask questions. So that's what we're here for. Don't feel like you're interrupting or anything. Um, we don't want you to fall behind if you're missing something while we're talking. So, okay, without further ado, uh, I'll just go ahead and introduce Susan. How are you today, Susan? <laughs> good, thank you, Rebecca. And you? I'm doing good. good. And Chris, I hope you're doing well as also. <laughs> Um, and I just want to mention to everybody, too, that uh, as Rebecca said, we are always available to help. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, we'll put our contact information in the chat um, toward the end. And again, if you uh, if you need a copy of the handout, you can also call us and ask to pick it up in a printed version of it, too. And we can print that out for you for free, too. So just let us know uh, if you'd like to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and jump right in by sharing my screen. And today we are using the de the, um, the online version of Zoom instead of the app today so that I can show you my whole desktop screen because a lot of what we're going to do today is going to be dealing with the whole desktop experience that you can have. So it's going to look a little meta at the beginning here <laughs> as I go and minimize the screen so that I can start the presentation for us. All right, so I'm hoping everyone can see Intro to Windows 10 computers now. Yes. Excellent, thank you, Rebecca. Okay, so the things that we're gonna cover today, um, because learning about computers and technology is uh, basically a language of its own, uh, we are gonna go over some terminology and descriptions um, and some definitions so that we all kind of have the same um, general uh, terminology that we're gonna we're gonna discuss and work with and so we all know what what we're talking about um, and we know everyone's coming at this with a different level of knowledge already so we want to make sure we start with um, the core kind of foundational stuff so we'll talk about desktop elements we'll talk about how to manage a window and how to move or resize a window and don't worry when we cover terminology we'll talk about what a window is uh, we'll talk about how to open a program and the different kinds of things you can do with a program to keep it running uh, and maybe switching switch between programs 
And then we'll talk a bit about settings and how to customize your settings and also uh, how to get to the help menu in case you're stuck and you need um, some help. And the nice thing about Windows 10 computers is that they do actually have uh, a specific way for you to get uh, help by searching for something. Uh, and we'll talk about that. And then we'll talk a little bit about starting up and shutting down your computer and the different ways that you can uh, do that and what it means to do, you know, say sleep instead of um, shut it all the way down. Okay. All right. Are there any questions before we begin? Uh, I don't see anything so far, but I should say you might want to move that little window that says you are sharing your screen. Thank yes. you. I'll yes. try to tuck it down here in the corner. That works. So we can hide it for us. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we're going to kind of have a uh, two part here. We're going to talk about the terminology and descriptions of things. And then we'll do uh, some combination of live demo of kind of exploring what our screens look like uh, as well. So the first thing I want to talk about within terminology and descriptions is a computer. So a computer is essentially just a, an electronic device that stores and processes data um, based on things that have been coded um, and involving sequences of numbers and things like that. So if you've heard of binary, which is basically zeros and ones and zeros and ones, if you think of it a little bit like turning a light switch on and off, um, that's essentially what computer code is based on initially, is this idea that you either have something to say yes to, which would be like the light switch turning on, or no to, which would be like the light switch turning off. And then it gets much more um, layered in there after that. But essentially your computer, either your desktop computer or your laptop or even your smartphone, which is essentially a computer, is basically an electronic device that stores and processes that data. Okay, oops. Okay, so a desktop computer is essentially the computer that has a separate monitor, processor, keyboard, and mouse. So when you're looking at this image here, if you can see my arrow, the processor is essentially this unit here, monitor, and then your keyboard and your mouse. And they all work together. You plug, you know, you plug the things into each other, and then um, you can use them to process and, and do your work on the computer. Now, a laptop computer is essentially the same thing, but it's smaller because, of course, it's designed to be portable and fit in your lap. And it's going to contain the monitor, keyboard, processor, and touchpad, which is essentially the mouse, in one unit. So it's easy for you to take it with you. Now you can plug in an external keyboard or an external mouse to this as well and still have it work. But the idea of a laptop computer is just that everything is kind of compressed into a smaller electronic device. Okay. Okay. So the monitor is the computer component that allows us to view images or graphics. So if we didn't have a monitor, we could still use a computer. We could still do stuff with it, but we wouldn't be able to see what we're doing. So we use the monitor to help translate those, you know, light switch on, light switch off, so that we can understand it and we can interpret it uh, from the computer language. Okay. Uh, you also have a hard drive. This is part of the usually contained also in the pro within the processor, and the hard drive uh, stores your digital content. Um, it can store your documents, your pictures, your videos. Um, it also will store your programs and your preferences and the operating system. So your operating system is gonna be Windows 10 in general is your operating system. Just like on your smartphone, Android is your operating system or iOS is your operating system, okay? And then each time you have, when they um, do an update to your phone or make changes, that's going to your operating system. It's making changes to that operating system so that it's either more secure or has new benefits to you, okay? So your hard drive is where all of that digital content is stored. And it can be internal, like in that processor in that first image, or it can actually be external. So you can also get external hard drives where you can store all of these things again. And it's also, uh, a lot of folks will use that as a method to back up what's on their computer um, so that if something happens to their computer, they still have all of their data, okay? Okay, so another place they might back up some of that data or store things is on a flash drive. 
or it's also known as a USB drive, jump drive, thumb drive. <laughs> There's quite a few different names for um, a pocket-sized data storage device that's used to save electronic files. You can also, you know, you could put a program on there too and then run that. Basically, it's a chance for you to take the things that you would normally have on your internal hard drive and put them to something like this so that then you can take this to another computer and put them on a different computer. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna switch gears just a little bit from the physical pieces to the uh, what you see on the screen, okay? So your desktop is essentially the primary display area on the computer screen. And you can kind of think of it as like your home base. It's basically when you start your computer, your desktop is what you're going to see first. And it's usually where you're gonna have um, shortcuts to different programs, and you're going to have maybe a picture there of your family or cats in my in my uh, in my personal world. It's my cats, um, but it's basically all of this blue on our on our screenshot here. It's basically all of this blue space here is representative of your desktop. Okay, so just like you have your desktop at home, where maybe you have your computer on your desktop and you have an in-out box for files, and maybe you have a plant, uh, maybe you have a telephone. You can think of it in kind of the same way. That's where they were going with calling it a desktop, because everything that lives here basically is like living on top of your desk, okay? Okay, and then we use the term icon to be a graphical representation of something in a computer program or a file. So if I was to say we need to click on the icon for Google Chrome, we would come down here and we would double click on the icon for Google Chrome. Now the nice thing about most icons on our desktop on our desktop is that it will also have the name of the program or the file right there underneath it too. So it's easy to identify what they are. Okay. Now the window, this is not to be confused with Windows as in Windows 10, because as we said, Windows 10 is an operating system. But a window by itself is the area of the screen that displays information from a specific program. So it works independently from other parts of the screen. And if you see our diagram here, or our screenshot here, what you can see is I have opened a browser and the browser is gonna let me browse the internet or browse the web and I've opened a Google Chrome, so I went ahead and did that double click on there, and it's gonna open a window. And the window here is essentially where I can see and start to do things with that program or Google Chrome, okay? And there's some things we can do to manipulate that window and move it where we want it to go and use it in the operating of our computer, okay? And we're gonna cover that in a few minutes. We also have a taskbar, and the taskbar is a stationary strip of icons used to access frequently used programs like internet browsers or Microsoft products or anything else that you've put there, okay? So it's typically located at the bottom of your computer screen, um, at the bottom of your desktop, so outside of that blue area down at the very bottom, uh, but you can decide what programs to pin or unpin to the taskbar. So if you find that you frequently use Google Chrome, maybe you would pin Google Chrome to your taskbar so that it's always there. I use something called the snipping tool all the time. So instead of having to go over here to where it says type here to search or look at my full list of programs to find that program and then click, click, you know, click a couple of times to get to it and open it, I have pinned it to my start my uh, taskbar, which means there's a little icon that appears in this set of icons here on my computer that gets me to the snipping tool. So it's a way that you can also customize what you see down there for those things that you use frequently. Okay. It also will show you over here uh, if you see these two here, the one that says PS and the one that is um, Google Chrome looks a little bit like Simon Says game. Uh, if you notice the blue line underneath these that the others do not have, that means that these are currently open programs on the computer. And we'll go over this in more detail when we do the live demo in just a moment, but I want you to, to keep in mind and kind of pay attention to the fact that when it has a blue line under it, that means it's actually open right then and there, okay? Okay, 
We also have something called the system tray. And the system tray is a part of that taskbar. So it's also along the, usually located at the bottom right corner of your screen. And it has things for system functions, like your date and your time, um, being able to change your volume. Uh, if you're on a laptop, gives you the chance to see how full your battery is, uh, whether or not you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, and then the little carrot here, if you click on that, it allows you to see other icons that are included in the systems area, okay? Also over here in the far right corner, if you can see that big number one, this is something Windows 10 does where it's giving you notices or notifications about things going on with your computer. So you might see, as an example in this corner, uh, a notification that you need to update your operating system or that it scan, your computer has scanned for viruses and didn't find any, okay, things like that, okay? We're almost done with our definitions. I just got a couple more and then we'll stop for questions, okay? So the start menu is down in the bottom left corner typically, and it's the central launching point for programs and tasks. So usually once you've started the computer and you get to that screen where you see the blue desktop and then you have your task bar, and your system tray is on the right, your start menu is gonna be on the left. And if you tapped on it, and the icon for the start menu is just four little panes of a window, and you tap on that, and then you get to do a bunch of other things on your computer. So you'll notice in this screenshot, we have all of our programs that are on the computer. So for example, if we wanted to open Adobe Photoshop, we could click on Adobe Photoshop from right here, in this start menu to start that program, okay? We could also start doing other things, like we could start using our settings, which look like the little gear. We could uh, start our internet browser. So that's where you get the term start menu. It's basically like the starting point, the launching point for things on the computer. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, and do a live demo of pointing out where those things live and we can take questions as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing that. When you're doing your demo, oh. someone did ask, how do you pin something to the taskbar? So yes, yep. I'm sure you're I will going to show, show I that. Can, yes, I can absolutely show that. All right, let me go ahead and I'm going to share my screen. So it's going to get a little meta here for just a second while I push this down below. And I'm going to put it over by the start menu for now, and then we'll change where it's located. Okay, so now I'm hoping that everyone can see my desktop screen here, which is mostly, again, the blue area here. Yes. And then I have my a couple of icons over here and my taskbar down below. You probably want to move your um, little window I'll move there. move it over to the start. Yeah. Maybe I'll put it up in the far corner. That way it's not it's blocking anything here. on that yeah. taskbar. Okay. Good plan. I'm going to put it all the way up there. Okay. So... Uh, I'm going to jump past a couple of our terms here uh, for computer and laptop computer and monitor. Um, if you take a look at the handout, you can see what images of those look like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with on what would be page five of the handout, which is talking about the desktop, because that's what you can see on the screen here in front of me. So the desktop, again, that's the primary display area on the computer screen. In our case, it's got a blue background and it's basically your home base. So you can put things here, um, you can put files here, you can put shortcuts to your programs here. Basically, you can put anything on the desktop that you want, okay? Uh, we do teach a class that's coming up next week on file storage or file organization, and then another one on file storage. When we teach those workshops, we'll be spending some time with our desktop to kind of clean it up so that it's not ev not just everything is on the desktop. And we'll come up with some ways to, to help organize things so they're not all here. Uh, but there's also icons. So again, we said those are graphical representations of programs or files. So this, for example, it, where it says presentation, or sorry, presentation intro to um, W is actually the intro to Windows class that we're currently teaching. So this is an icon for a file. And then over here we have different programs and the recycle bin, um, Firefox, Chrome, those are all programs, okay? Those are icons for programs. 
So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the window. So I'm going to use the example we started with where I'm going to go to Google Chrome, which is a browser that lets, lets us access and browse the internet. And I'm going to click twice on it so that it opens an internet browser. Okay. And now this right here is our window. So if you see where it says up in the top corner, it says new tab. And then we kind of follow it along the little border here up and over to where the X out button is over here and across the top. So this is a window and I can have multiple windows open at the same time. So if I come over to Firefox and I open it, this is also a window. Just at the moment, that window happened to take up all of the screen, but I have two, now I have two windows and I can click on them to go between them, okay? So you can have as many windows up here as you want. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about how to kind of manage those windows while you're, while you're working on your computer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of them for the moment, okay? And if you see down here along the bottom, this is our task bar that goes all the way across here, okay? So here is my snipping tool. This is the one that I've pinned here. So if I wanna pin something to the start menu, I, or to the taskbar rather, I can go to my start menu over here, click there, and I could pick something from this list and I can right click and say, pin to start, which would pin it to the start menu or come down to more and say pin to taskbar. So if I pin to taskbar, you can see that now this little calendar is now pinned to my taskbar, okay? That means I can very easily come down here and click and open the calendar, okay? If I wanna remove it, I can just right click on it and say unpin from taskbar, okay? So that's how you can uh, pin or unpin from the taskbar, okay? So if you select your program and right click on it, I can also do it from here. So if I wanted to put Firefox down here and pin it, I could right click on Firefox and say pin to taskbar. Then that would go down here and now it's pinned here. So if it's fine, you find something you use an awful lot of time, um, it might be easier to put it down here again so that you can get to it with fewer clicks. And then I'm gonna right click on it and say unpin from taskbar, okay? So that's how you can add and take things off of that taskbar. Now, if you notice right now, again, like I mentioned, the two things that I have open right now. I have a Chrome a browser window open. That's what I'm using right now for our Zoom conversation. And then I also have a, the PowerPoint for today's um, uh, presentation, okay? And those are both open down below. That's why they have those little blue, uh, blue lines underneath them. The things that are not open are these three over here that I've also pinned to the taskbar. So the things that you pin will not have that blue line under them. The things that you have open and you're currently working with will have those blue lines. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, <clears throat> so the system tray, again, is over here on the right hand side and has a couple of different things that you can immediately tell about your computer. For example, the date and the time. If I click on this, I can see the date and the time. If I had to change it, let's say it's daylight savings time, and for some reason my computer didn't automatically change, I can go in here and I can change it and make it correct. I also have my new notifications. Now this is turned off right now because we're in the middle of a webinar, so I don't want a whole bunch of notifications popping up and chiming and doing things in the background. But if I did have them, they would show up here, okay? Then we have our volume and the volume looks like a little speaker and I can turn up or down my volume by using the slide bar here. So if you find that you can't hear me very well, um, the first thing to do is to check your volume on your computer and raise or lower this volume, okay? And if any of you are, oh, and then you can hear the chime there. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, if you're on one of our public internet stations here at the library for the webinar today, you should be able to see the, um, the time and the date down here in the corner, but you may not be able to access some of these other functions because they're turned, they're turned off with administrative privileges on those computers. Uh, but we, uh, right here is also our 
internet access. So this is telling me that I am on the internet here at the library rather than on Wi-Fi, which I would be on if I was on a laptop. Okay, it also tells me that Chrome is using my speaker or my microphone, and that's correct because we're in a Zoom conversation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then here's my little carrot where I can show other hidden icons. So here's um, Windows security and some other, this I think is my headphones um, and some other things that are down here too, okay? This is a widget that we've added, which tells us the date or tells us the, um, the temperature and the uh, weather currently, okay? So if I was to click on this, it would give me more information about the weather and news and things like that, okay? Any questions so far about the system tray and the task taskbar or a window? No. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the start menu. So when I come down here to the left-hand side of my taskbar, the very left corner is the start menu. And the start menu, and if you have an older version of Windows computers, um, it might have a circle with the little windows in it instead of uh, being just the just the window panes themselves. Um, if you have an older version of Windows, that's probably the case. Okay, so when I tap on it or click on it once, it's gonna launch the uh, start menu where then I can see all of the programs on the computer. I could also click on them from over here on these little icons and uh, this is something I pointed out in our in-person workshop for keyboard and mouse um, last Tuesday as well. It's not entirely obvious that there's a little scroll bar here, which allows you to, to scroll down through the list of programs if you grab it. So I'm gonna move my mouse over the top of it, put down the left mouse button, and then I can scroll through this list of programs. So you can see if I put something on the taskbar, I don't have to deal with this. I don't have to look through this alphabetical list. I don't have to then click on something. So it's a little bit faster to, to pin it to the start menu if I use it all the time. Okay. So if I go up here and for example, I said the snipping tool. So if I come all the way down here and I have to look through the uh, everything to find where it says snip and sketch, and then I'd have to open it from here. And then if I use it again and I snip and sketch something else, I'd have to go back into it again. So that's why I just stick it down here instead. Okay, because it makes things a little easier for me. All right. Okay. And good there. Any other questions? Any questions so far? I don't see any so far. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and spend a little bit more time with that start menu here and talk a little bit about the programs. So when I hit the start menu, again, I can see all of my programs here and I can scroll through this list. I'm using the click wheel on my mouse now to scroll up and down through this list of programs. Sometimes you have things where it's actually a folder. So if you see how this looks kind of like a manila folder that you might find in a filing cabinet, sometimes what you have to do is open that folder and you get some other options. So File Explorer is something I use all the time and it's something everybody will use when they start creating documents and have to figure out where you're putting them. Uh, but notice that we don't have here just a File Explorer under the list of programs, right? So if I was doing things alphabetically, I would expect to find File Explorer right here and I don't. That's because it's actually all the way down here under the Windows system folder, okay? So if you don't find something that you're looking for by name, check for it under um, other things. And we'll talk a little bit about how to search for it in just a second too. So for example, Zoom is a program, but if I do this, I have the option to run Zoom or uninstall Zoom. So from here, I would hit Zoom and then I would be able to get into my Zoom, my Zoom screen. Um, or if you look over here on the far right side, there's my icon where I can just launch it from the desktop. Okay. Okay. I hope that I hope that makes sense. Um, if not, please feel free to pop something in the chat, and I will try to explain it a little bit better. Um, here's another one. For example, Microsoft Word. So I could look under Microsoft, 
All right, I'm looking under Microsoft. I see Microsoft Office. If I knew that Word was a part of Microsoft Office, I might click here and then try to see if I could find Microsoft Word in there, and I don't see it in there, so darn. So it's not under there. So maybe I have to just check for it under Word, and then that's where I'm actually going to find it, is under Word 2016. Okay, so sometimes it is a little bit of a guessing game to find what you're looking for. For example, here's PowerPoint and Publisher as well. So instead of being under Microsoft PowerPoint, it's just under PowerPoint. Okay. Alrighty. Um, you can also tell up here where it says Office. So this is uh, another launching point where I could launch Word 2016 or Excel or Outlook or PowerPoint right from this section of the Start menu. Okay. All right. Any questions about the Start menu? I don't see anything so far. Okay. So the reason I'm explaining all of these different different ways to basically get to something is that there are a number of different ways you can open a program on a computer. And whichever one you prefer is one that you then can set to kind of customize your experience. So I have the ability to go. So let's say we're going to open uh, Google Chrome. So I have the ability to come down to the start menu, look for Google Chrome in my list here, find it under G, Google Chrome, and tap on it to open it. That's one way I can open it. A second way is the icon on the desktop, which is known as a shortcut, because it basically takes out that having to hit the start menu and search for it. I can double click on this and open Google Chrome this way. If I had it saved to my taskbar down here, I could open it from the taskbar. I could also come to the search function here and type in Chrome. And the best match is usually gonna be the, the program on your computer. And then I could hit Google Chrome from there and open it this way. I could also come down to the start menu and find it right here as an icon and open Google Chrome that way. Okay, so all of this is somewhat customizable based on what you use the most often and what way you want to get to it. You can add those shortcuts to the desktop very easily. Um, I can show you that real quick. So let's say I wanted to add a shortcut to the calculator. I can right click on it and then I can say mm, pin to taskbar or pin to start or I should be able to drag it and drop it here and then that'll add a shortcut to the calculator. Okay, then I can open calculator right from here. Okay, so if you need to see that again, um, for I can also remove the uh, shortcut here too. Let's pick something. Um, let's pick something else. Let's pick. Um, let's go find Notepad. Let's see. Uh, Notepad should be in. I think that one's another one that's in Windows Accessories. So let's say I want to put Notepad on the desktop as an icon so it's easier for me to get to it. I can just grab it and drag and drop it like that. Then I can open Notepad from here. Okay. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different ways you can you can open programs and you can find them on the computer. Okay. Questions about opening programs? I don't see any. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a couple of windows and we're going to talk about how to move and resize and manage those windows. So I'm going to open Notepad because I just made this nice Notepad. And now you see how this one, right now Notepad is taking up the entire area of my screen. So my desktop is entirely covered and I can't see my desktop because Notepad is take, has kind of taken over. Um, if I wanted to be able to see some of my desktop behind Notepad, there are a couple of things I can do to change things around. I can move my window for Notepad so that it doesn't take up all of the screen over here. So if I stop in the middle and I hold down my left mouse button up here at the very top, the middle top, and then drag, I can drag this window to various locations 
around the screen. Okay, and that's the left mouse button. And I'm just holding down the left mouse button and placing it where I want it. Okay, so let's say I'm just gonna place it there for the moment. Okay, and again, down here in my taskbar, we can see that I now have that window open for Notepad. Okay, let's go ahead and open something else. We'll open Firefox. Okay, so that's nice. Firefox open kind of, kind of small and contained. Um, and I can jump between Notepad, and you see how now the cursor's right here. This is untitled Notepad. And then where did my Firefox go? Well, now Firefox is behind it because I've selected this window for no Notepad. Now, if I back up here, I can also find it down below. So I could still open it from the taskbar. And we're gonna talk more about that method in just a moment. But for now, I just want you to know that you can jump between them, like Notepad from here and Firefox from here. But having to jump back and forth and keep moving them like this can be kind of tedious sometimes when you wanna be able to see more than one thing at a time. So the other things you can do is you don't have to just move them around. You can also change their size. And there are some sizes that you can do automatically. And then there are others that you can kind of customize. So we're gonna spend a, sec uh, a few moments talking about these three icons in the right hand corner of your window. Okay, so the farthest one over, when I hover over it and it makes an X, this is closing out of a window or Xing out of a window. So what that means is that's closing the program and Xing out of the program. So if I do this, watch what happens down here to the taskbar and my, my little notepad symbol right here, okay? Do you see how it went away? It went away because it's no longer open. Can you guys, can you see the taskbar? Rebecca? Yes, yes sorry. Okay, okay. If you can't see the taskbar, it might be hidden under your, um, your Zoom window. And if you move your arrow a little bit higher, your cursor a little bit higher up, you might be able to see it a little better. I just noticed that on my, my view um, as an attendee. Okay, so if I wanna close out of Firefox, I close Firefox and then you see how it disappears also from the taskbar down here. <clears throat> so that would be closing out of a program. We do have a raised hand if I can. Um, sure, absolutely. Have them talk, hold on one second. Absolutely. Okay, they should be getting the opportunity to unmute their microphone. So to the person who has their hand raised, I'm asking you to unmute. If you'd like to speak your question, you can go ahead and unmute your microphone. Okay, maybe it was just an error on their part. Mm -hmm. I'll, yeah, I'll message them and ask if they had another question. Okay, and also if you have questions too, you can also type them in chat or you can ask them again. At, we can try again at the end too um, to answer any questions you may have. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that again and then show you a couple more things that you can do um, with resizing a window, okay? So I'll go ahead and open Firefox again. So I'm just gonna come down here to my icon and I'm gonna click twice to open Firefox. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click twice to open calculator. Okay, now right now these two can live pretty easily next to each other. They're two different windows and they're both small enough that I can still see the desktop behind it and I can move between them if I want. If I hit that middle button, which says maximize, for either one of these, that means it's gonna go to be full screen size, which means it's gonna move so that all of that blue desktop behind it is gonna go away. So if I maximize Firefox, you can see that now it's taking up the whole desktop here. Okay, and I'm gonna move my little uh, zoom thing down here a little bit. Okay, so now if I look at this and I hover over it, um, and for those of you who are at the mouse class last week, hover just means that we're gonna put our mouse over the, our cursor over the top of it, but not click it. And you're gonna see, it's gonna pop up and say restore down. Now restore down means it's gonna take my full screen Firefox window 
and smoosh it back down to the size that we originally had it. So if I say restore down, it's going to come back to the original size that it was. Okay, so that's another way that you can resize <clears throat> quickly resize your windows to make them take up the whole screen or take up less of the screen. Okay, so if I did that with calculator, see how now it takes up the whole screen up here. If I hit restore down, which is the, now those two squares up there, two representation of two windows, and then I can put it down here. Okay, so that is restoring, restore down or maximize. If I want to resize them to be a very specific size, I can also do that. So if I take my Firefox, and let's say I want Firefox to take up almost half the screen, I can move the calculator over here by holding down my left mouse button and dragging and moving it around the screen. Then I can come over to Firefox, kind of put it up in the top corner over here, and then I can drag it. When I hover over the border of the window, does everyone see how it turns into two arrows, one going left and one going right? I don't know if you can really see that. It's pretty small on the rec on the uh, yeah, live view, small. isn't it? Um, I wish I could make it bigger. Unfortunately, I don't know that there's a, anyway, um, if you look at your handout, there's a big screenshot of it, um, but it turns into two arrows. And as soon as it turns into two arrows, if you hold down your mouse button, you can go to the right or left and change the size of your window, okay? So you have a lot of control over what your size of your windows is, okay? You can do the same thing at the top and bottom as well. So if I come to the bottom here and I wanna resize it, I can do the same thing and go up and down like this, okay? So if I was doing something like copying um, text from one place to another, and I wanted to be able to see both of them at the same time, I could make them, make it so this was half my screen and also make it so the calculator is half my screen, like this. Let me get up there a little closer, okay? And then I can make it half my screen as well. Now I have a, a, a tip for everyone. When you're resizing, manually like that to do a custom size. I typically will grab from the bottom left corner first because if you'll notice, let me move this one in just a little bit. With a browser like Firefox here, if I was to try to grab, let me pull it down a little bit so you can see this. If I was gonna try to grab to make my two arrows, and I was gonna try to do it from here. I have to be very exact with my border here and where I'm resting it. So I very easily could hit the X and close out, or I could very easily hit to maximize the window instead. So what I usually do over here on the side, this side I get the scroll bar too. So sometimes I'm trying to expand it and I end up hitting the scroll bar. Um, down here in the corner, I end up hitting the arrow and going down this way. So that's why for me, when I'm usually doing it, I'm actually gonna grab down here in the left corner and pull like this to make it bigger or smaller. Cause it's a little bit easier for me to be exact in my movements. And that's one of the biggest thing with, with um, the computer is using the mouse and the cursor and getting things kind of exact, um, which can be very frustrating. So that's why I always grab from right there and move it back and forth. Okay, so on the calculator, same idea. Down here, it's the equal sign. So if I kind of grab in this bottom corner, I might just be hitting equals instead. And down here in this bottom corner, it's a little bit tricky too. But up here, in between, there isn't really anything I'm grabbing there. So I can use this as a better place to, to stretch it. Okay, are there any questions about uh, resizing what I say manually? for resizing windows, oops, sorry. I don't see That's any another, questions. Okay, what I just did there was another way you can actually make something um, all the way big is double clicking on it like that. <laughs> so I restore down and if I double click up here, it'll also make it full screen. Okay, so that's full screen view. Now I'm gonna talk about minimizing real quick. So minimizing 
is when we take something that's on the screen and it is open, but we want it to go away and we kind of want to tuck it, like it's almost like tucking it into your pocket, but you want to grab it again later. So you still want it to be somewhere you know where it is and you have it at the ready when you want to return to it. So if I hit the minus sign, so I always think of minus, minimize, min, min. So if I hit this little minus sign, which is the third of these icons, that will send my open program down here to the taskbar. I can do the same thing with Firefox. So now if I wanted to open something like Microsoft Edge, do something in here, da, 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 have it be full screen because I like the bigger ability, the ability to have it bigger and see stuff and I need to switch back to Firefox, I can just come down here to the taskbar and open it from there. Okay, so this kind of works well when you've got lots of things open and you want them all to be full screen because right now I can't see anything behind it. But if I come down to my taskbar, I know that I can switch between them and jump back and forth pretty easily. Okay, any questions about that? I don't see anything. Okay. So those are kind of our desktop elements. So the desktop elements basically having a window and uh, the system tray, managing those windows and using that taskbar. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and X out of that. So if you remember what I, that I said, uh, file explorer is something we'll use a lot when we're doing things with files and thus it says, exploring for files or trying to find your files or search for your files. Uh, so that's why it is usually pinned down here to the taskbar so that it's easy to open like that. Again, just like all the other programs though, I could come over to the start menu and I could come down through this list. I don't see it here in the Fs under File Explorer. I have to come all the way down to Windows System, click there, find it there. Okay, and for some of you, you may already have a shortcut to it on your desktop. So it looks like one of these icons that's here on the desktop, okay, which is fine. And, and you can add it there if you want. Uh, but the File Explorer is basically the file management application or program that's used to browse for files and folders on your computer, okay? So it can be a very important tool and we're gonna cover it in more detail next week when we talk about organizing files and folders. Um, but I do want you to see kind of what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it up from the taskbar so you can see what it looks like. So this is File Explorer. And if you think of your computer, basically like you would think of your filing cabinet at home, you know, your big metal filing cabinet with a couple of different drawers that you can open where things are organized either alphabetically or by subject or topic. That's a little bit like how your computer has organized your files and folders so that you can get to them. So when you look over here on the left-hand side, down here, this PC is essentially like your filing cabinet, okay? So everything that lives on this PC is essentially in one of those drawers of a filing cabinet. And again, we'll use the filing cab cabinet analogy next week too. But anything you have in here, so if we have any documents, or if we look exactly at our desktop, so the desktop screen that looks like this, again, that shows us our Zoom, it shows us our calculator that we just added, it shows us um, documents here that are screenshots from Zoom, it shows us our presentation to Windows, PC, uh, Windows PCs, all of those doc documents that we've told should live on the desktop. That's where we can find them. Okay, um, if we download anything from the internet, it goes into a folder called downloads. Um, if we go into documents, that's a folder that we have on the computer called documents. So this PC is basically the starting point to access all the disks and folders and files on your PC computer. And you can get to it from File Explorer. This quick access section up here are ones that you might get to more often that you might use more often, um, thus quick access. And you can pin stuff there too. We talk about that again in um, a week when we talk about file organization. So just know that everything that's here basically is a link to either your computer 
or in the case of the library, we have some uh, stuff that are shared among staff members. And this one has access, this computer has access to some of the shared stuff. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? I'm hoping that makes sense. So file explorer, it's going to be very important. If I wanted to look for it, again, I could also come down here and type file explorer in the search box there and get to it that way. Okay. Any questions about file explorer? We'll kind of demystify that next week when we talk about file organization too. I don't see any. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on then. We're going to talk about some settings that you can customize on your computer to help with your, your uh, experience using the computer. So we're going to take some time to explore our settings. And just like you would on a smartphone or a tablet where you go into your settings and you change things, um, you know, you might change so that your phone is on vibrate so that you don't get notifications all the time. Uh, you might change how bright your screen is. That's all stuff that you can change on a computer as well. So if I come down to the start menu, I can also not only launch programs, but I can also launch my settings. So if you see here, this little gear, that is your settings. So I can go ahead and click on settings. And if you're on one of the internet computers here at the library, you may not be able to get into settings because of the administrator um, privileges on those computers because this is a way for you to customize the experience. And those are all set up to have kind of the same beginning experience. Um, so you might need to just kind of watch, watch at this point, okay? So when we get into our window settings, we find a whole bunch of different things that we can look at. If you see where it says system, click on that. So the system lets you change things like your display and the, uh, how bright your display is. It also lets you change the scale and layout of your text. So that means how big does everything appear? So for me, if I'm struggling with the laptop because the laptop screen is a little bit too small for me to really see stuff, I will come in and change the scale and layout and the resolution of my, uh, my computer. So I can change the scale and layout just simply by tapping there. Um, I can go back to 100% if I want, bump it up. I bumped it up for the webinar today, so everything would be a little bit bigger, um, except it didn't work for the mouse, unfortunately, <laughs> the cursor. Um, but you can see that that's one way you can change things. Um, you can also tell it if you're going to plug it into a projector, you can tell it which screens to use. That's this multiple displays section. OK. Um, so you can change a whole bunch of stuff about your system from here. Um, if I want to change my brightness, I can actually even look at find a setting up here and type it in and say brightness, and then go to the ease of access brightness. And you can make your display easier to see or use. You can make your text bigger. You see here the text gets bigger. Um, so you can normally you can see the brightness would be right here and you can change your brightness level. I think this one is set specifically because the uh, the monitor controls some of that stuff. Um, you could change your mouse pointer size, text cursor. So if I click over here on the left hand side where the mouse pointer is, this is where I changed it from the white color, which I think is a little harder to see, to the black color, which I think is a little easier to see. And I changed the size of it. I made it a lot bigger. So there you see how it actually changes. I should just leave it this big for the rest of the duration here. Did it change back? Oh, interesting. It changed back to tiny. That's, that's okay. how it is with Zoom. Once you click down on yeah. something, it goes to the <laughs> thing you changed it to, but then it reverts yeah, okay. back. It's a okay, Zoom so, thing. OK. So anyway, you can, you can change these things about your computer and your computer experience. Um, so I encourage you to take some time and go through and look at your settings in there um, and see what you can change to make your experience a little bit better. Um, there's also, with ease of access, there's things for accessibility, too, um, that may make your experience a little bit better. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to show, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, is the help menu. You can also ask the computer to give you help. If I type in get help, the first thing that comes up, this get help app, that is actually from the Windows computer and Microsoft, and they're trying to help you. 
So you could put something in here where it says chain brightness, and then it's gonna bring up instructions and you can say, read the article, and it's gonna tell you how to change the screen brightness in Windows 10. Okay, so normally we could do it down here um, from the uh, task, uh, the system tray and taskbar down here, or we can go into the settings and change the screen brightness from the settings. Okay, now if I come down here, I don't think I can do that because we don't have it set up that way. We have it set up for nightlight, but so anyway, you can also use the get help app, which is also in the start menu, and that one is under get help and you can open it that way too. But if there's something not working or you're having trouble with something, you can actually go in and get help right from the computer. You can also go to support.microsoft.com from a browser. So if I open Google Chrome, I can go to support.microsoft.com and then put in here, and get to the same thing. So changing the screen brightness on Windows 10, same idea. Okay. Okay. So you can also enter a specific question in here, like, like how do I find a program? And that's going to take you out to the to the, a web search for how to see all of your apps in Windows 10 and how to find it. So here's what we what we just learned about seeing the list of the apps is to go to the start menu and then scroll through the alphabetical list. Some apps are in folders like we just discovered. So, okay, so that's another, another possibility for getting some assistance. And of course you can always come to the library and we can help you uh, with stuff as well. Okay, uh, any questions about using the search? No, I don't see any. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about is shutting down your computer and starting up your computer and the different uh, power settings that you can have. So if I go down here to the start menu and click on it, the symbol here for with a circle and a little line through the top of it is kind of a universal symbol for power nowadays. So you might see this on a tablet or a smartphone as well as on the physical button on your computers, on your processors, or on your laptops, and it means power. So if I wanted to turn off my computer, I would come to power and I would hit shut down, okay? And that's gonna turn my computer entirely off. So the shutdown closes all the software programs in preparation to turn off the computer's power. So it shuts everything down. Sometimes you might want to use the restart button and the restart button, you might be familiar with that if you've ever done an update on a computer where it says, you know, okay, your computer has to has to run some updates. So it's going to restart after it runs all these updates or uh, if something freezes in the middle of what you're doing, um, sometimes it's good to just restart the computer. So you restart it. Okay. And restarting closes the programs. Finals, finalizes all pending input and output before the computer shuts down, and then it automatically turns it back on. So it basically restarts everything, the processor starts again, and it brings up everything again, okay? I'm not actually gonna do either one of those because that would jump us out of the Zoom webinar, <laughs> which I don't wanna do quite yet. Um, there is another function that you would have uh, for your laptops especially, and that is sleep. And if you put something to sleep, it conserves your energy by putting your computer into a low power state and it turns off your display. But when woken up, it resumes where you left off. So a lot of times with the laptop, if you close the lid of the laptop, you're putting it into a state of sleep where when you open it back up, it's gonna restart that screen and let you get back into it. So that's one way to conserve um, power on a laptop too, okay? And the other things I wanna cover real quick, if I come down here, uh, this little person here means that I am logged in currently on this computer as the, with the librarian profile. If you share your computer with other people, you might have a profile for you and a profile for maybe uh, the grandkids or maybe a son or daughter or um, maybe 
you know, you have, you share it with some housemates and um, you're gonna have different profiles. That means when you save your documents, you're saving them to your profile on the computer. So you can sign someone out. If I click on that, I can switch users and go back and forth. So while the librarian signed in, I could also be signed in as the desk clerk or the um, checkout desk person. Uh, I can also lock my computer if I'm gonna step away from it. And I recommend this if you're in a place where security might be an issue of your device, or if you have other people who will sometimes borrow uh, your computer without asking perhaps, um, you might wanna lock it. When you lock it, it means that you're gonna have to put in a password to get back into it. Or you can sign out a specific user and then sign in a different user. So those are some other options if you share your computer with other people. Okay. Okay. And that is pretty much everything I have for today. Does anyone want to see anything demoed a second time by any chance? I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and I'll come back in here and put my video back up. Okay. Would anyone like to see something a second time? You can always raise your hand too. Yes, and if you'd like to ask your questions out loud, please feel free to raise your hands and we can ask, answer those too. Um, I am gonna quickly share the PowerPoint screen again um, with the additional resources here. So let me move that out of the way and come down to addition, additional resources. Um, so here are some other resources that you can look at too. Uh, we do have a, a course with Gale Courses. It, it's six weeks. Um, if you have a CPL card, you can take an introduction to Windows 10 um, over a six week course of time taught by another uh, and like a college professor instructor. Um, there's also GCF Learn Free. They have a topic for Windows computers. Uh, LinkedIn Learning has Windows, 10's tips, Windows 10 tips and tricks. Some of these go a little bit uh, more in depth than what we've covered today in our hour. Um, I also have listed uh, some keyboard shortcuts for those of you that prefer to do keyboard work instead of working with a mouse. That's also a possibility. And then the uh, other one, the essential training, same idea with LinkedIn Learning. Um, that does uh, need either a CPL card or I believe Urbana does have it. So if you have an Urbana free library card, you can also use that through them. Um, and then here is my information. I think Rebecca is going to put this in the chat as well. So you can always reach out to me via email or phone um, or contact us here at the library through chat or email. Um, and you can set up, I'm going to jump ahead and then go back. Um, you can set up a book a librarian where we can do one-on-one -on -one help for technology things like Windows 10 computers and other, other topics. Um, and then as I mentioned, the next two classes that are coming up, digital file organization and digital file storage. Those will be on the 21st and 28th, the next two weeks. Uh, I do recommend signing up for both of them. It is essentially like a two-part series uh, because they, they're so intricately connected with you know, creating files and putting them into a certain order and then having a place to put them and backing them up and making sure that you don't lose any of your work um, if something were to happen. So, okay. So I'll go ahead and jump out of that. Whoops, hold on a second. I gotta jump out here too. All righty. Okay, put back up my video. All right. Other questions or things we can answer or comments? I don't see anything in the chat. And again, if I mean, these are all things we can, can we can continue to go over. And I think the biggest thing with technology also is practice. And the more you work with the handouts, and the more you practice, you know, resizing a window, the more you practice minimizing, and then reopening a window, the more you practice searching for a program, the easier easier it'll and more comfortable you'll become with it. Um, and the foundational th and I like to say it's a little bit like math in that. All of the foundational stuff that we learned today is sort of like learning one plus one. Um, and then that's going to prepare you for being able to do more complex things in the future. 
and then you'll also improve your, your accuracy with your, your mouse and cursor skills too. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any questions, but um, if you have a question after the webinar, you can feel free to reach out to Susan or I, or you can reach out just to the library in general. You can always give us a call or email librarian at champagne.org. And anybody at the desk should be able to help you, even if it's not Susan or I. Um, we're all pretty well versed in some of the basics and even more advanced topics as well. Yes. Or we and can we help you help. guide to the answer yes. if we don't know personally. Yes. Yeah. So if it's something that's a more, you know, like a more technical question about having to open up a computer or something like that, we can we can send you in the right direction <laughs> for people to help with that kind of stuff. Yes. So. But yeah, I want to say thank you everyone for coming today. I hope that we'll see you again for file organization and file storage for the next two weeks. Um, after that, we are we will switch to tablets for a little bit and talk about phone, um, Android phones and iPhones and ta uh, Android phones and tablets, uh, iPhones and iPads. Um, and then we will talk about our ebook collections that we have here at the library that are available for everyone. So, all right. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.